about how to master your key signatures. Specifically, like if you have a key signature with sharps or a key signature with flats, how do you figure out what key that you're in? And uh, basically, what does that mean? We're gonna be talking about what key, like what exactly a key means and then how to figure them out, basically. So just going through the lesson breakdown, we're gonna first review the keys, or what keys are, basically. Then I'm gonna be giving you a trick for figuring out the sharps, trick for figuring out, or sorry, the, the it should say sharps and then the flats, not bass clef, treble clef. I uh, goofed <laughs> creating the lesson breakdown today, but you get the idea. It's all about key signatures. So let's get on to the lesson. All right, welcome everybody. Hopefully everybody is having a great day. Let me get one really quick thing started. In the meantime, feel free to say hello in the comments in the chat room. Always love to hear from new and returning students. All right, it looks like everything is good to go. I always like to make sure that the stream is starting because that's pretty important. Don't you think? All right, let's get on to our lesson here. So let me get up staff pad, which I have, I should have ready to go. Here we go. Okay, so now the first question I'm gonna answer is what is a key? You've probably heard that around a lot. Um, keys, key signatures, playing in different keys, flat keys, sharp keys, etc., etc. A key, if I did define it, tells you what notes are sharp or flat throughout a piece. So for instance, a key can have a certain amount of sharps or it can have a certain amount of flats. It can't have both. You're not gonna have a key that has one sharp and two flats with it. It's either gonna have a certain number of sharps or a certain number of flats. So let me show you what that's gonna look like on the piano. So for example, the key of C has zero sharps, zero flats. The key of G has one sharp. D has two sharps. I'm just showing you that you can either have sharps or flats. So like the key of B flat, for example, has two flats and no sharps. But it's showing you basically, going back to the key of C, what notes exist within that key and what notes you're gonna commonly find throughout a piece that's in that key. So if you're in the key of C with a piece, you're gonna be seeing pretty much all white keys. Now, they can have sharps or flats in the middle of the piece. We call those accidentals. They are not part of the key signature. So you're gonna see keys a lot when you're playing. Because as like I said in the beginning, you've probably heard, oh, playing in the key of C, playing in the key of G, so forth. So let's use the key of G for an example. The key of G has one sharp, F sharp. That's pretty much the definition of the key of G, but there's a little bit more to it. Especially when you're talking about scales, you're going to be starting on the note of the key that you're in. You're going to play up until you hit that note again with any necessary sharps or flats added to complete the key. One thing I want you to notice is that when I play this, in the key of C, that's called the C major scale. It has a certain sound to it. And when I move it over to G, if I don't have the F sharp in there, notice how it sounded a little weird, the last three notes in there? Well, you because of the spacing on the piano, you need sharps and flats in certain places to be able to make sure that the formula of the scale remains true. So for example, when you're in the key of C, you start on C and you go up what's called a whole step. So in music, you can move up, or on the piano, you can move up in half steps, which is just the next touching note, or you can move up two half steps. We call that a whole step. So anyway, you start on the note and then you're gonna, um, the formula for it, the major scale is whole step, whole step, half step whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So write that down. That's called the formula for the major scale. Now here's the thing, is you can use that formula starting on any note to figure out what the major scale is. So starting on G, you go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step. We need another whole step, and then lastly, half step. 
And that's why we need that F sharp there to complete that formula. And depending, like I said, if you're starting on different places on the keyboard, there are gonna be different sharps or flats in some cases to be able to fill out that formula. So remember the formula for a major scale, you start on the note and you go whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And you can use your key of C if you forget your formula, because you know it's all just white keys beginning to end. So that's a little bit about keys. They tell you what sharps or flats you're gonna be playing throughout. Uh, when you're playing in a certain key, generally you're gonna be starting with the note of the key. So if you're starting in G, your first note's gonna be G. If you're starting in the key of D, your first note is gonna be D, so on and so forth. So that's just a very basic introduction into keys. So let me um, show you a little bit more and then I'll give you a little trick on how to figure out the sharp keys versus the the flat keys. I almost keep, want to keep calling them treble and bass today for some reason, but that's not the case. So let me take a look, uh, make sure everybody is good. Hello, everybody in the chat. Well, to see new and returning faces. Hello, hello, hello. All right, well, let's continue on with the lesson. Let me know if you can't see or hear anything. Um, that is pretty important, but let's get into the nitty gritty here. This lesson, I know the title says it's gonna take an hour, but <laughs> going through it like ahead of time, I'm like, yeah, this will probably take like 20 minutes, but, and then I'll answer any questions you may have at the end. Okay, so now a key signature appears. A key signature is like a visual representation of what sharps or flats you have. So like we were talking about keys on the piano a minute ago. Now we're talking about keys on the sheet music and what that's going to look like. So normally your key signature would be right here. But if there's nothing written there, there's no sharps or flats, you're assuming that you're in the key of C major or it could be that you're in the key of A minor. We'll talk about that later though. However, what you're going to see most of the time when you see a key signature is this. So let's change our key signature. Let's change it to something with uh, like four sharps here. So here we have our key signature that has appeared. You have four sharps. You have F, C, G, and D. Now, how did I know what notes those were? Well, if you were to place a note right through the middle of where these sharps occur, they actually occur over F, over C, over G, over D. Now the left hand has the same four sharps. Now you may be saying, well, hey, they're on different lines of spaces. How can they be the same four sharps? Well, just remember that the left hand and the right hand, sorry, the treble clef and the bass clef, their sharps are in a little bit, or their notes are in a little bit different places. So everything's just shifted down on the bass clef. But the point is, is that you really only need to count one of the clefs because the other clef will automatically just have the same amount of sharps. You're not gonna have five sharps in right hand, two sharps in left hand, at least, not that I've ever really seen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, okay, so that's how many sharps we have in this piece. There's one, two, three, four, and those four sharps are F, C, G, and D. Like I said, just putting a note right through the middle there. We'll give you the answer to that. I'll also give you a little trick here in a minute. So now you know how to decipher a key signature. Let's do a couple of more examples just so we know what the key signature is telling us. And then like I said, I'll give you more info on some little tricks on some shortcuts on how to figure out these even faster. So now we have how many sharps? We have one, two, three, four, five, six sharps this time in this key. And those sharps, if you drew a note between the middle of each of these, hopefully you know how to read music, it would be F, C, G, D, A, and E. So that means every F, every C, every G, every D, every A, and every E throughout the entire piece is sharped no matter what, unless they do this. There it is. 
So what this means is say we have, um, yeah, say we have a note here, right? And if you know how to read music, you know that that's an F. Wrong, that is not an F. It's actually an F sharp. Now, why is that? Well, that's because I already told you that every F, C, G, D, A, and E is sharp throughout the whole piece, even if it doesn't occur on this top line. If it's down here, that's still gonna be an F sharp. Now, say that the composer, just for this one note, even though we're in this key signature, wanted this note to be not sharped, what would they do? Well, they would do this. They would draw a natural sign right before the note, and that would make that note, and actually every other F in that measure, into an F natural instead of an F sharp. When I get rid of that, now there are F sharps again. How about, let's just do an example here what are these four notes? Well, if we were just reading them regular, we would know that that's D, F, B, and G. I have lots of lessons on how to read music, by the way, on the channel. So just write, uh, look up how to read music and piano lessons on the web into YouTube search, and you'll find all of my notes, all of my, uh, sorry, uh, lessons on how to read music. But anyway, let's figure out these four notes. Normally it'd be D, F, B, G. However, now we have sharps to worry about. So D, well, D was one of our sharps. So this is D sharp. This is F sharp. We had that before. Let's see, we don't have any B sharp. So this is just regular old B and that's G sharp, right? F, C, G, D, A, E. Yeah, everything but B is actually sharp here. So those are the four notes that we have in the measure. So it is a little tricky at first, you know, getting used to where these sharps or flats occur. I recommend, highly recommend, that when you first start, geez, I can't catch a break today. When you first start learning these, hold on, let me do this. When you first start learning these and start playing in different keys, only stick to keys that only have maybe like one or two sharps, right? Like this one's easy. This one just tells you that F is sharp throughout the piece no matter what, whether it's this F, this F, or any of the ones in the bass club. So that's a little bit easier. You only have one sharp to worry about. When you start getting into five, six, seven sharps, it gets a little bit hairy. So if you're just new, stick to playing keys in <laughs> limited key signatures. All right, hello everybody um, in the chat. I'm saying hello to. Okay, so now you get the idea of how when you have a key signature, <clears throat> a key signature is that visual representation in the beginning of the piece. It has so many sharps or so many flats. That tells you what notes are sharp or flat throughout a piece. Now you got that piece of information. Let me show you one thing is we didn't do any flats, but that's quite all right, right? Because it's the same idea, right? So now we have three flats. What three flats do we have? Well, if we drew a note in between all three of those, you'd have B, E, and A. So all Bs, all Es, and all As are flat throughout the piece, unless they do what? Unless they draw one of those guys. That's a, a natural sign. It kind of looks like a sharp if you dropped it on the floor and its ends broke off just to show you that example. So now you may be wondering, Tim, how do I figure out what key that I'm in? Because believe it or not, the number of sharp, the certain, what notes are sharp to flat doesn't always necessarily correspond to what letter key that you're in. Cause you may have wondered, I've um, said things like, oh, we're in the key of C now. We're in the key of G now. We're in the key of D now. But the key of D has two sharps, F and C, right? None of those are D. It doesn't have anything to do with D. It's just the note that you're starting on is the key name. Remember like in the beginning, that when I said the key of D had two sharps, F sharp and C sharp, well, we had our F sharp and C sharp, but the key of D 
is the note we're starting on. So now we're trying to figure out, we know how the sharps and flats work. We're trying to figure out if you have a certain number of sharps or flats, how do you tell what key that you're in? What is your gonna be your starting and ending note, at least most of the time? I do wanna make a quick note, because somebody will correct me in the comments, that just because you're in a certain key doesn't 100% mean that your starting and ending note will be that note, but just for simplicity's sake for right now, we're gonna say that, and then I'll explain later on how that might not be the case. But let me show you, I wanna show you two things actually. And I want you to write this down. This is actually really important. I want you to write down, maybe I'll write it down right here. Um, actually, no, let me do this. I know what to do. I wanna show you actually in a more practical sense. So I wanna do this. And then I wanna do of this with the flats and so forth. Okay, so now we have a bunch of sharps. How many sharps do we have? We have seven sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. Now I want you to memorize this. This is the part you wanna write down. So there, this is called the order of sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, and B. This is the order in which you add the sharps. And what this means is that like, say you had a key with only one sharp. That sharp would be F, the first in this order of sharps here. Say you had a key with two sharps. Well, those two sharps would be F and C. What if you had one with three sharps? Well, those three sharps would be F, C, and G. So each time, you go up in sharps, you have all of the sharps from before. So the next one with four sharps, the, the one with three sharps, remember we had F, C, and G. So therefore the one with four sharps already has F, C, and G. You're just adding one more to it, which would be F, C, G, D. Let's take a look at this one right here, F, C, G, and D. You had five sharps, it would be this, the, these ones, six sharps, seven sharps. So I think you get the idea. And this is why you wanna memorize what this is called. This is called the order of sharps and you wanna memorize it as F, C, G, D, A, E, B. I think um, you can also find, uh, come up with like a mnemonic device to remember this. Some, somebody told me what, Father Charles goes down at every battle or something, or if, I remember Michaela, one of my um, students once said, fat children gather daily at every breakfast. Uh, you can do whatever you want. That one might not be the most politically correct, but uh, <laughs> it, it helped me remember it. So, um, and it's Michaela's fault. So if you get offended, it's hers. Anyways, um, order, remember that order sharp is very important. There's an order of flats as well. And then I'll show you how this actually ties in, but you can probably already see that it's pretty useful. Okay, the order of flats, G, C, F, is bead and then G, C, F, greatest common factor, we call that in school. That's how I remember it. But the order of flats is B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So if you have a key with one flat, it's gonna have B as your flat. If you have one with two flats, it's gonna have B, E. If one with three flats, it's gonna have B, E, A. Four flats, B, E, A, D, B, E, A, D, G, four, five, six is gonna have the C included, and then F. Same kind of idea where each flat key, each time you add one, you have all the flats from before, you're just adding one new one. So that's why it helps to remember order of sharps is F, C, G, D, A, E, B. So just say I know that already, and I have a key with three sharps. Well, I have to do to figure out what three sharps those are is name off the first three in my order sharps, F, C, and G. Just like that. Same thing with flats, uh, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. Say I had the one with four flats. Well, I know my order of flats, B, E, A, D. Those are the four flats we'll have. Doesn't matter whether you're in a sharp key, sorry, a major key or a minor key, which we'll talk about here in a minute. So now you know how to figure out 
what sharps or flats you'll have depending on what number you have so now we have that piece of information that's pretty important but now like i promised we need to get into like how do you figure out what key are you like what's the letter name of the key which is what we'll get into next i just want to say hello to everybody these are hilarious uh yeah share the video to promote me <laughs> i'll never forget order of sharps yeah like i said if you guys get offended blame michaela it's her fault I'll give you her address and phone number. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually really like Michaela as a student. Michaela is a good student. I actually kind of miss all of them. I'll get into that maybe later. Um, COVID kind of threw a wrench in it. But let's continue here. Um, all right. On to the next part. So we've learned a lot about sharps and flats so far. You know, you know, to figure out like everything we talked about so far. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a key signature with sharps in it. And I'll give you a little trick to figure out what is the name of the key that we're in. But I have some questions for you first. Um, we're looking right here. How many sharps do we have? Emma's here. Yes. Is Emma here? What up, Emma? Oh, yeah, you are here. What up, Emma? Glad to have you here, of course. Um, and then we're going to do some announcements at the end here, but we'll continue going here. I don't want to get too distracted. Okay, how many sharps do we have? We have three, right? And what three sharps do we have? Well, remember, fat children gather. So we have F, C, and G. And it's the same between both clefs. Remember, you only really need to count a one clef. Exactly. So our three sharps are F, C, and G. So here is the deal, man. What you want to do is you want to find the sharp all the way to the right. And that is this one. Then what you want to do is you want to go one over from the one all the way to the right. So instead of this one, we're actually going to this one. What note would that be if we had a note there? That would be C, right? It's specifically, remember it's a sharp, so it's gonna be C sharp. So to find out the name of the key, oh wait, wait, I do, I'm doing the flat one. Sorry, 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 sorry. Forget about all that except for this part. Go to the last sharp. <laughs> now I have good news for you. You don't have to go to the next to the last one. It's just the last one. So sorry about that. I was thinking about the flats. It's a slightly different trick. But with the sharps, write this down. Go to the last sharp. And that would be what? F, C, G, right? And, and specifically, it's G sharp because we have a sharp there. You play that note. And then what I want you to do is I want you to move one key up, one half step up on the keyboard. And that gives you A. So therefore, the key of A major has these three sharps, which are F. Come on, it's not letting me write it. F, C, and G. What if we add a different key signature? So let's try this again. Let's say we have five sharps. Now we have to figure out, the first thing you wanna figure out, how many sharps do you have? We just have, I already said five. I already gave you the answer. Um, Somebody's giving away the answer. It's all good. Um, so we have five sharps. Those sharps are F, C, G, D, and A. So what you do is you do what? You go to the last sharp, A sharp, right? You find A sharp on the piano, and then you go up a half step. And now that is the name of the key that you're in, which is the key of B. So the write this down. The trick for the sharps, step one, is to go to the last sharp. You find that sharp note on the piano, so that's A sharp. And then you just go up a half step, and that gives you your answer. Let's do a couple more with the sharps. Flats has its own thing, and then I'm gonna talk a little bit about flats, or, sorry, major and minor keys. So, oh man. All right. 
let's say, and you may have seen it in the menu there, it actually does tell you what the name of the key is. But anyway, you have seven sharps now. What do you do? You go to the last sharp, and that's B, right? B sharp, you have to be careful because B sharp on the piano is actually C. And then what you gotta do is you gotta go up one note from there, and the key that we are in is called C sharp. It has seven sharps which is all of them pretty much. So that's how you find your key if you're in a sharp. You go to the last sharp, you find it on the piano, and then you go up a half step. Now, if you've been doing this a long time, you don't need to find it on the piano, but it certainly helps in the beginning. Let me talk about flat keys. That was a weird transition. Greetings, I love this channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Okay, so now we gotta talk about flat keys. What do you do if a key has flats? It's actually easier. Say with three flats. What you do, and this is where what I was, now you'll know what I was talking about before. You don't go to the last one this time, the one all the way to the right. What you do is you go to the one to the left of that. <laughs> so it's the one right next to the one all the way on the right. Now, when we only have three flats, it's not a big deal, but when you have multiple flats, you'll go to the last one and then the one right before that, which happens to be this, right? If I had a note on that um, key, on that note, I can't talk today, <laughs> that would be an E flat, right? Now we have to figure out what the name of the key is. Well, guess what? All you have to do for flats is find the one next to the last one and make sure it's flatted. And that's your answer. So therefore the key of E flat has three flats, B, E, and A. And now if you're wondering how I can play these so fluidly, that is why we learn our scales because not only does it help you with finger technique, but it helps you really understand the layout of these scales and what they look like on the keys and what they look like on the keyboard. So learn your scales, very important. So remember with the flats, the trick is just to find the next to last flat. That's it. Let's, uh, let's do a couple more just to get this in our brain, get this into our brains. And then I have some important stuff to say at the end. Um, Okay, so as you can see, uh, they give us the answer in the little menu there, but hopefully you didn't see it. How are we going to figure out what key that we're in, guys? Well, you find the last one, but you go to the one right before that. What note would that be? Well, it's on the second line of the treble clef. That normally would be G, but remember, we're talking about flats. So G flat, and hey, you don't have to do anything. Remember with the sharps, we had to like find the last one and then move up. Well, this one, it's the next to last one. You just play that note and boom, we're in the key of G flat with seven flats, B, E, A, D, G, and C. Again, using our order of flats, B, E, A, D, G, C. Just like that. All right, let's continue. Uh, you may be wondering if you've been paying close attention, well, Tim, you said with the flats that it's the next to last flat. What if you only have one flat? Then it's like there can be no next to last flat because there's only one. Well, great question that you've, you've asked all on your own, I'm sure. Now the answer to this question is simple. The answer is F. You're just gonna have to remember with flats, if you only have one flat, or well, yeah, one flat, the key is F. You're just gonna have to memorize that one. Sorry to tell you, but uh, that's just the way it goes. So yeah, that's how you figure these out, sharps or flats. Now, one last thing is you may have heard me talk about in this lesson, major keys and minor keys. Major keys, sound happy, not sappy, I meant to say just happy. And then um, minor keys, 
sound sad. Every key has a major and a minor equivalent to it. Every key we've talked about up until now has been major keys. All of them. They've all been the happy type. But so we have to talk about the other side of things. But it gets easier because the order of sharps is the same as before. The order of flats is the same as before. And actually, you only need to do a little bit more work if you already know your major key to figure out the minor key. So here is the thing I want to explain. Key of C, no sharps, no flats. From C up to the next C, no black keys in between. There's a minor equivalent. It has the same key signature. So what you do is you find your major key, key of C. I already told you. Then what you do is you go down one, two, three half steps, and that gives you your minor equivalent, meaning that if you started that same scale from that different note, it's gonna automatically give it that minor sound. So here's C major. Here is the A minor. As you can see, just changing where those keys start changes the sound of it. Let's say we have one sharp. Now, I'm gonna throw a curveball. What sharp do we have if we have one sharp? Well, the answer to that is the first one, your order of sharps, that's F, right? Because we only have one sharp, that's the one all the way at the end. So therefore, you just go up half step and we are in the key of G major has one sharp. So now the key of the question I have for you is what minor key would have the same key signature as G major? Well, because we know the major key already, you just go down one, two, three, just like that. Pretty easy. Now, one last thing to conclude the lesson for today because this part could probably be a lesson all on its own. But the question is, if you're in a certain key, whoa, back here, back, back. If you're in a certain key, say we are in this key with one flats right here. How do I, no, actually, let's do this. Sorry, let's come up with another key. I want to do one with sharps. Okay, so now we have the one with three sharps. This could be either A major or F sharp minor, just kind of filling in some gaps here. The question is though, is if you have a piece of music, how do you know what key that you're in? Well, one easy way is judging by the sound. You know, if you start playing the piece, sounds like that it's going to sound happy so it's probably going to be in the major key but if it's sounds sad then you're probably going to be in your minor equivalent but there's a couple more indicators and like i said i can make a lesson on this part all on its own look at the first note first notes f sharp that might tell you that we're in the key of f sharp minor especially if you start to see F sharp minor chords being played. So you play the, uh, I guess like pro tip to figure out what key that you're in, play the first chord of the piece or the first few notes and determine does it sound major or minor. 99% of the time it's gonna correspond correctly. So because I have an F sharp minor chord in the beginning here, chances are we're in F sharp minor. And then you would also see like probably at the end of the piece, an F sharp minor chord as well. Not 100% of the time, but use that to your advantage. Use the sound of the piece, play some of the chords of the piece, determine if those first and last chords, are they the major counterpart or the minor counterpart? And then figure it out from there. There are some other things like, I could seriously go all day um, bringing up examples, how to figure out what key that you're in. Let's do like one example, because you're probably like, Tim, I want some examples. Why not? So we have this, we're just gonna use the piano for now. So what do you think Fur Elise is in? It's actually kind of hard. Well, 
me play that chord right there. What sound are you getting out of that? Is this... By the way, Furry Lease has no sharps or flats in the key signature. So either it's in C major or A minor. So... So let's just isolate that chord right there. Well, it sounds pretty minor and sad to me. So therefore, the fur release is in the key of A minor. And sure enough, it is. So you can use that sound. The sound is really a pretty, very, very good indicator. There are some other like intricate theory things you can look at. Uh, but if you do what I say, most of the time it will steer you in the right direction. And if you ever have any questions, you know, you can either ask a teacher or, you know, look it up online. But today I've given you a very good overview of like what keys are, hopefully you have a better idea on what keys are, like uh, that keys can have sharps or a certain number of flats, up to seven sharps and seven flats. Um, how to figure out like if you have four sharps, what sharps are those? Or if you have four flats, what flats you have. And then of course you understand that the flats and the sharps add on to one another. That's why we learn our order of sharps, order of flats. So F, C, G, D, A, E, B, B, E, A, D, G, C, F. So you can figure that out. And then we talked about that um, with sharp keys to figure out what the letter of the key that name that you're in is that you go to the last sharp. So say we have three sharps, F, C, and G. You go to the last sharp, G sharp. You go up a half step on the piano that gives you A. That's your key name. With flats, it is the next to the last flat. So if you have three flats, B, E, and A, it's that middle one, E flat there. If you only have one flat, well, guess what? You got to memorize that that's the key of F. So let's, um, I'm going to do some announcements here to kind of conclude today since we are getting up to um, the holidays here. So let me get some things here ready for you guys that is not what I meant to do so what I want to tell you right off the bat so I don't forget is that there's a holiday sale going on for the courses over on my website piano lessons on the web.com it ends January 20th so you got about a month to take advantage of this one so why should you sign up for my courses well if you like my YouTube videos my courses are more well structured than my YouTube videos usually with my YouTube um, I'll cover something in a video and then we'll just move on to the next thing well the courses are different than that because the courses will introduce you to a topic you'll have like notes that you can uh, refer back to on what you're learning and then after you learn that so what I'm trying to say, all right, so in it, the courses are divided up into five units. In a unit, you're going to be learning like some concepts, kind of like what we did today. But then you're gonna have the opportunity to practice those concepts with um, you know, printable worksheets, real sheet music to play, um, and assignments around what you're learning. So that you're not just practice or learning about something and moving on, but you're learning, practicing, and mastering each topic as well and then you would move on to unit two learn some concepts and then have the opportunity to practice unit three you know just like a college course or something like that so they're more well structured they also give you um, more of an opportunity to practice what you're learning as well these are great for beginners who need a solid foundation or if you have some experience already and you're looking to advance your skills i have some courses for you you're gonna learn about piano theory improvisation rhythm ear training and anything else i found that would help you become a good musician and then of course you can contact me via email anytime with any questions i'll be happy to answer them for you you learn at your own pace the courses don't expire and they work on your favorite devices um, you can sign up for courses individually. However, I recommend the course packs because um, one, they're on sale right now, but two, uh, they actually include multiple courses for uh, a much lower price. So normally courses are $29.99 a piece. You get four courses here for $39.99. And then the other big advantage of the, the packs uh, is that these courses are organized based on generally like what playing level you are. So this is the beginner's pack. These are like the four foundational courses that you're going to need for pretty much everything else. 
Uh, satisfaction guarantee, just email me within 30 days of purchase. There is a contact form as well um, in case your emails get sent to junk mail for better or worse. Hopefully that never happens, but you know, uh, I do get a lot of junk. So um, there's a lot of ways to get in touch with me. Anyway, let's uh, let me show you real quick that there's also an intermediate pack and advanced pack and you got your all course access um, same thing with the, the intermediate and advanced packs they cost a little bit more money but they include a lot more courses any course you're interested in you can click on you can see um, the course description page what you're going to need to know ahead of time what you're going to be able to do at the end of the course pretty important stuff the pieces you're going to be learning and just a real general idea of how long it's going to take you to finish the course of course the all course access is the best deal on the website you get all the courses for a nice a low price and uh, satisfaction guarantee of course applies to the all course access as well i want to tell you one more thing and then we'll move on here is say you're checking out you're like i like tim and his courses and i'm ready to do this so what you i want you to do though as a thank you for coming by today this works on top of any sort of sale that's going on so you type in youtube you click apply and it gives you an additional 15 percent off the rd discounted price just a little thank you for coming by today so again if you're a big fan of what we do here on the youtube channel the you will find that the course is very enriching it's also a very good way uh, to invest not only in your own music education but into the channel as well because it's through the support of the people signing up for the, through the courses is a big reason why we're still here and still making lessons uh better and better to this day you know youtube ad revenue is all over the place so um a big big thank you for anybody that signed up through the courses on the website remember piano lessons on the web.com code youtube for an additional 15 percent off all right guys let me Let's talk about like Christmas and stuff. Christmas is sneaking up on us real fast. I wanted to do a like a Christmas stream where I just play, we just kind of like hang out and play Christmas music. I, I can't promise anything. Like I, so Christmas is next Saturday. I'm just kind of like looking, um, you know, ahead here. Um, I might be able to fit one in Christmas Eve, but it's like 50-50. Let me be honest with you guys, this time of year I get really depressed. Um, the reason behind that is uh, it's around the time uh, my mom passed away. And I also have had like a lot of other people pass away uh, this time of year. And uh, it's just a really tough time of year for me. I don't have as much energy as I normally do. Um, a bit more preoccupied. So I can't make a promise. I would want to, I want to, but I can't make a promise on like any kind of um, Christmas stream just because I don't know how I'm going to be feeling. Like I just, uh, I'm just being honest with you guys. I don't know. Uh, but I do what, what I do want you to know though is that generally almost every time I do feel better uh, once Christmas passes and once the uh, New Year, be New Year's begin. So it might be a little rough of the next couple of weeks. Just throwing that out there, just based on like how I've been feeling the last couple of weeks. Um, I was actually kind of surprised a couple of weeks ago how good I was feeling, and um, it just kind of hit me the last couple of weeks. I just have not been able to put stuff out like I wanted to. That's why I only had one stream this week. I wasn't even sure if I was I was going to be able to do this one, but. Uh, I wanted to get one in here for you guys and I do have a lesson that I, I um, am ready to record I put a lot of work into it and I just couldn't record it last week I was just not in a good place to record like I was, just being honest with you guys um, I know that it's better to communicate than not so um, maybe we'll have a stream maybe we won't <laughs> so so I might not see you before Christmas I, I might though I might so sorry it's just a real tough time I struggle with depression a little bit on and off anyway but uh, this time of year is just tough for me so yeah I had a year uh, like three years ago people remember if they've been following me for a while where 
like my mom died and then i had all these like uh, i had all these other family members died and my cat died um i remember i lost four including my cat it was five family members in the same year and it was really hard i mean it's still hard like every time this time of year comes by it's it's just really hard for me so it's not an easy thing for me to admit but like i said i feel like uh communicating is like the best way because if because if next week comes around and you don't hear from me or like uh you know you don't hear any i'll try to wish you guys merry christmas on discord or something but at the very least but if you don't see the stream come up or you know like uh or if you just don't see a lot of stuff coming out the next couple of weeks that's why so i just want to tell you guys that i'll be okay I know I'll get messages on Discord later. I'm like, oh, I hope you're okay. And, you know, I'm fine. I'll be all right. But I just want to let you guys know that. Um, so I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to be in contact with you guys over Discord. Um, like, like it, it's going to be touch and go. Like, like if we're going to have a stream, I'm going to let you know like a day in advance probably. I just don't know how I'm going to be feeling. So I don't even know what else to say now. Um, the beginning of the year, I plan on uh, working on the courses over on my website, uh, getting them, you know, polished up. They're really good the way they are, but um, I've been making lessons for a while now. And I feel like if I redid them, that they would be like, you know, chef's kiss. Amazing. Um, thank you for linking to the Discord, Jeremy. So if you guys want to join the Discord... Uh, I have links in the description. I'm pretty good about including those now. Um, so, so yeah, I don't know. It just sucks. <laughs> Time of year, just kind of depressed. So, um, like I said, I want to let you guys know about that. I um, my priority over the next two weeks though is just to kind of get better and feel better. So, I'm not gonna push myself too hard. I probably should take like a little bit of a break, but I don't want to take uh, any extended, really uh, like long break. If we take a, a break, it'll be like a week. And um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm <laughs> gotten to a sad place now, but I just want to let you guys know, like I said, I know I'm rambling, but uh, I want to let you guys know what's going on with me. So you guys don't think I, uh, I don't know, I died or something. Um, I feel you. Like my mom was at the hospital with COVID. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm trying to learn to walk. Oh, really sorry to hear that. I just bought a bass to make myself feel better. Okay. So my keyboard. That's great. Yeah. Uh, learning music is a great coping mechanism. Unfortunately, I don't have a class on learning the bass. But yeah, sorry to hear from anybody that's been having a tough time. Um, thank you very much, Yusuf. Um, but I know it's a tough time for a lot of people. It's either a tough time or people are like, oh, isn't Christmas the best? And it's the best time of year. How could you be sad on Christmas? And then I tell them and they're like, oh, <laughs> like, yeah, uh, not everybody has the same experience through Christmas as you. You know, some people it's been sh like my, my Christmas has been shitty, like since I was born. Like I, I just uh, my mom and dad, they didn't. They didn't treat Christmas as like a fun holiday. I think they got lost in the sauce. I think they for for like getting ready for Christmas, that they put so much stress on themselves and us that it was like not worth it. So I just kind of like have never looked at Christmas as a really positive thing. But yeah, all those people that love Christmas are weirdos. I'm just kidding. But I do get that sometimes where people are like, "Oh, how could you not love Christmas?" And then I tell them, and they're like, "Oh." That's a pretty good reason. So anyway, guys, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I do have to uh, head out for a little bit um, for a few minutes to run an errand. But anyway, guys, thanks for coming by today. Uh, if I don't see you before Christmas, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy holidays, of course. You know, try to be inclusive to everybody. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys around. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like I said, it'll be touch and go. You might hear from me. You might not. Um, either way, I'll be in touch in the Discord. So thanks, for everybody, for coming by today. You know, always remember to subscribe. Tell your friends. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. So have a good holiday.
Thanks, Jeremy, for coming by today. Thank you to Emma. Hopefully things are going better for you, Emma. Um, and, yeah. You should focus on the New Year's. I agree. I'm going to try to just kind of get back to feeling better again. So, um, but everything will be all right. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks for coming today.